Well, that's a pretty good intro, too, because talking about Corinthians, and we're going to start going over through Ephesians, and I think sometimes we forget, we, you know, even though these are ancient manuscripts, we forget that these were real people. It's not just uh, some dudes in a dark room, though he might have been in jail and it was dark writing, but um, <laughs> we forget that he's addressing a real church, real people with real issues. When you, uh, for the next couple of weeks, man, I, I just want to dig through the book of uh, Ephesians as you guys journey uh, uh, with us, as we journey together through the book of Ephesians. And I'm going to try to break it down chapter by chapter. And when you look, uh, the background of Ephesians, man, as when you're reading in the book of Acts, you can kind of trace it back to the book of Acts in chapter 19, verses 1 through 20. Um, but the, the book of Ephesians was written to the church of Ephesus. Paul was on three different missionary journeys. And on one of those missionary journeys, on the way back, he passes through Ephesus. And Ephesus is a strategic city. It's a big city. And like many of those cities in those days as well, there's a lot of paganism going on. There's, you know, idolatry and going on. And, and so Paul... He, he visits, he's ministering through, through Ephesus, comes back, ends up visiting again, stays about three years there ministering in the city. After those three years, he sends Timothy. And he sends Timothy to pastor, right? And when you look through 1 Timothy that's where he sends Timothy to pastor, take over. So Paul plans a church, takes off, and then he sends Timothy. Now Paul is ministering in the city of Rome, and he's imprisoned for preaching the gospel. Pretty much on house arrest. And when he's on house arrest, he writes some of the epistles. So he's writing uh, a book of Philemon, uh, of Philemon, sorry, uh, the book of Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. So while he's in jail, he's encouraging the church. He's writing those letters. He's addressing issues. And even in the book of Ephesians, you're seeing that, you know, the Jewish believers and the Gentile believers, right? There's, there's always, like, there's always this tension between them. There's always trying to get over the prejudice, Right? And with Paul, when he's addressing the church, even through here, he's reminding them that they are one in Jesus Christ. As people, we have a tendency to want to sit, stand, and hang out with those who think like us, talk like us, walk like us. And then we also sometimes have very few patience with people uh, who don't think like us, talk like us, and walk like us. And sometimes it's found in the church. And yes, we naturally gravitate to certain ways, but then we got to be careful because as a church, we have to be ahead of that. As a church, we have to be the, the institution. We have to be the body, right, that is exemplifying, being the example of what forgiveness is. Being the example of what grace is, what love is. That we're bridging the gap between ethnicities. That we're bridging the gap between generations. That we're bridging that gap. So as I get into the book of Ephesians, what I love about the book of Ephesians, it's really broken into two parts. And the, the first few chapters are pretty much Paul is reminding them who they are in Jesus Christ. As Christians, man, Dennis, we got to be reminded often who we are in him. Living in a day and age where the world is constantly, right, pulling at you, tugging at you, you know, uh, and, and, and trying to even rob our identity of who we are in Christ and to maintain. And, and, but when you look, it's like Paul is reminding the church who they are in Jesus Christ. The second half is he's reminding them how they ought to live out what they believe in because it's important to know what you believe in be reminded in what you believe in but if 
also is once you know what you believe, once you know who you are, once you know what and who you are in the eyes of Christ, that should influence how you live your life. Because we're not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. So it starts off, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Now this is how I like to read, because we just got off of a series, Pastor Gary, and we're talking about faith and economics, we're talking about what it is to, to uh, live out our faith in, 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 at our work, amongst family. So when you read that, Paul is saying, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, I would say put your name in there. You know what I mean? I would be I, Hector, a sales rep of Jesus Christ by the will of God. I, Hector, a father, right? I, Hector, pastor of Jesus Christ, not of Jesus, but through Jesus Christ, by the will of God. And the reason why I like to read it like that, because sometimes if I don't read it that way, then I separate from myself from Paul and say, well, that's his responsibility to live like that, not mine. But we're all called to serve God. So I would say, put your name in there, and whatever vocation God's given you, that you live it in such a way that it represents who God is and what you believe. And then he goes on and he says, to all the saints, and some of the ain'ts, who are in Ephesus <laughs> and are faithful in Jesus Christ. He's talking about the saints. Now, the saints aren't someone that the church establishes as holier than thou. When you look through the scriptures, saints are those that have separated themselves onto the Lord to live for Christ. Now, that's you and I. We are saints, and he's reminding them, not the Jew, not the Gentile, but the saints, all of us together, right? Not those that are from Durango, not you Californians, right? Not the Salvadorians, right? He's saying all the saints who are in Ephesus, all the saints who are in journey, all the saints who are faithful in Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. And then he gets into this awesome praise. Because he's reminding them again who they are in Jesus Christ. And as we go from verses 3 all the way to 14, just keep in mind how many times he says in Christ, through Christ, because of Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. And so check this. Bless be the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Man. You understand that blessing, right? Usually we like to say, hey, be blessed, brother, and we're trying to think of financial gain. But, but when you look at here, when Paul is saying that we are blessed, right, that who has blessed us in Jesus Christ is what someone says about you. So what he's saying is that we are blessed in Jesus Christ, that because of Jesus Christ, God views you and I different. There is something that is spoken in the heavens on our behalf. He says, who are, has been blessed in us in Jesus Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Every spiritual blessing that is in the heavenly places. Now often when we pray, right, we always like, God, help me right now. Boy, I need to pay my bills. Lord, help me right now. I need a new car. Or help me, God. But when you're looking, those monetary gains, those things come and they go. But what Paul is about to get into is the spiritual blessings that you and I have. The monetary gain, those things come and go. But what Paul is establishing in the heart of the believers and reminding them is the spiritual blessings that they have in Father, in our Father, the 
spiritual blessings that you have in God because we got to be careful. Sometimes we measure how good we are or we measure how blessed we are by what? Our monetary gain. And we lose sight that the real and the true blessings are not what we have in this world, but what we have in the next one. Your value and your worth is not our title. It's not our, our, our job vocation. Or it's not what you do for a living. It's not what you even say about yourself. Your value comes from who God says you are, what he created you to be. But our value comes also through what the work of Jesus Christ. God sees us through him. Our blessings are spiritual. So when he's like, hey. Spiritual blessings, these are the things that last. Verse 4, even as he chose us in him, in who? In Christ, right? He chose us in him before the foundations of the world that we should be holy, blameless before him in love. He predestined us for adoptions as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. In other words, from the foundations of the earth, he already set forth a path. He already set forth a place. He already set forth a way for you and I to be grafted into his kingdom. Now, there's a lot of theologians right now who want me to say a lot about this verse. Predestination. And, you know, some people say, hey, man, they believe that they are special enough that they're the only ones that God loves. And greater minds have debated this, Pastor, and fall on each side. So I'll be honest enough to say, I mean, I don't know, but what I do know is that God made a way from the beginning. If you go back to Genesis and you go back to when God, when the, the fall of man, what does he tell Eve, right? And he's, you know, talking about, man, that, that from your seed, right, there's going to be salvation. From your seed, there's going to be one who's, you know. And so when you look at that, God had already was establishing a route. God was already establishing a way. He was already pre. Now, I'm going to, what I'm going to say and then the way I'm going to look at it is like, man, God had foreseen, right? And foreknowing does not mean that he's forechoosing. I don't believe God that's going to pick some. You're going to go to hell. You're going to go to heaven. I'm gonna go, I, like, I, don't, I don't see God being able to, I like, I don't, like, he is sovereign, and I'm sure that there's some that he has purpose for greater works. There's some that he has purpose for greater things. But most in Jesus Christ, he set a path for you and I to be grafted in. And what Paul is doing is that he's reminding the Jewish believer in the first century church. He's reminding the Jewish believer. And as we continue to read, he's reminding them that all the promises that God had given them from way back. That God chose Israel, a special generation, that he would glorify himself through them. That now he's doing it. Through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, that now we are being adopted by the Holy Spirit as sons and daughters. According to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved, verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of trespasses according to to the riches of his grace. Again, God has chosen these people through the blood of Jesus Christ. He's reminding the Jews, right, when back when they were slaves, when God was taking them out of Egypt, you know, what did he have each one of them do is that each family, after the famine, I mean, after the plagues, he told them, hey, you're going to get now a sacrifice, you're going to get an animal, and then they're going to put blood on the doorpost and and uh, upon doing that right they're gonna uh, the the um as god will pass by and death will take i'm getting into a sermon i don't want to get into but as god will come in and take the first child that he was going to take the pharaoh that they were going the the plagues were going to go over them and they will not be recipients of that plague 
Salvation came through that sacrifice. And what Paul is now teaching them is that same sacrifice. That blood was foreshadowing the blood of Jesus Christ. And what they were experiencing and what they believed and what they saw and experienced and what they held heart to the old, you know, to the old traditions and the teachings that God was now doing it through Jesus Christ. That we are blessed, that we are sons and daughters of, 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 <clears throat> of the Most High through the blood of Jesus Christ. That in Him we have redemption through the blood, forgiveness of trespasses according to the richness of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things to him. Things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance. Having predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Verse 12. So that we who were the firstborn. For we who are the first to hope in Christ. Might be the praise of his glory. In him you also, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Again, Paul's reminding the church who they are in him. Paul's reminding them, man, of the redemption that we have in Jesus Christ. The forgiveness that we have in Jesus Christ. The inheritance that we have obtained through the work of Jesus Christ. That because we believed in this truth, we have been sealed. Now, you look, what would kings, when they send a letter, they have a wax seal, and they'll put their insignia on it, right? And you knew that whoever sent that letter, that seal identified who sent that letter. And whatever was in that letter, that message was from him. And the Holy Spirit, as those of us that as we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit is given as a seal. It's almost like a down payment. It's like God saying, dude, you are mine. You are mine. And it's important to know that because we often measure how good God sees us based on how good you and I have been. And it is important that you and I live lives of obedience. It is important that you and I, even though we're not perfect, that we do have holy direction. But it's not based on works, but it's based on the work of Jesus Christ that you know that in your journey of faith, as you grow, that you have been sealed by God through the Holy Spirit. That his mark is on you. That his mark is on your life. That you do not lose sight. I had a bad week today. I don't know if I'm worthy to go to church. I had a bad week today. I don't know if I can take of communion. I had a bad week. I don't know of what God thinks about me this week. I had a fight with my spouse, or I had a fight with my brother, or I had a fight with my cousin. I, I, I'm not worthy to pray or, or look at God. I don't think me and God are at good terms. But when you look, what Paul is writing the church, that it's not based on your works. It's not based on how good you are or how good you think you are or how good you're not or how good you think you're not. But your encouragement to get back up, your encouragement to stay on path, your encouragement to keep pressing forward shouldn't be on your works, but it should be on the work of Jesus Christ. That you know what, man? I have an obligation to my father because he loves me. I'm going to do right, not out of duty, but out of love. How can I not serve God? How can I not live right if my dad, I mean, he would say, man, you guys are my sons, please. You bear my name. That when you meet people that they'll say, yes, esos son los hijos de Ernesto. Those are, er those are Ernesto's sons. And I see it on my dad's face today. It's like, man, I met your sons, man. They're great boys. And they're like, oh, he must be talking about me, right? But when they talk about, <laughs> when they talk about like our brothers, it, it's, 
it may, I can see it on my dad's face how proud he is. And none of us are perfect. But he's proud. Why? Because we carry the name. We carry the name. And, 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 but when it goes back, like with, when you look at it, it's like, man, knowing that my dad has an expectation of me. I'm not going to just live by the expectation, but my dad has worked hard for us. My dad has put in work for our home. I see my dad work three jobs. My dad worked long hours. My dad, you know, suffered through to keep coming home and keep working. It's like, dude, my dad didn't come to this country so I could hang out on the streets. My dad didn't come to this country to work hard and make a living so I could just waste it away. So I had a responsibility based on, man, I got to do right by my dad. And that's just the human side. And there's times when you look at God and say, man, I have the seal of God in my life. I have redemption in Jesus Christ. God had already from long ago had already paved the way for me. If the word of God says that he's the author and the finisher of my faith. Therefore, if he's there in the beginning and there at the end, he's going to see me through. And you got verses where Jesus is telling the disciples, I will be with you always. Then as a church, we should never lose sight. We should never lose hope. We should never lose trust that that is God with me right now. Am I still valued by God right now? But that Paul is reminding the church who you are in him. This is who you are. This is your worth. My dad, he has a smartphone. And sometimes I laugh because my dad's 76 and he's not like into technology whatsoever. And they give him this iPhone, super, you know, and he's like, my dad is actually, he's like, hey, you know, (laughs) he's all, well, you know, I got a smart phone, but the phone has a dumb owner. <laughs> and they're trying to get him to do all these apps, right? And my dad's like, no, like, I don't care. <laughs> He's like, I just want to call. That's it. I don't want to take pictures. I don't want apps. All I need a phone is to call. That's why I got a TV. That's why, you know, like, I don't need this to do anything else. And, you know, sometimes it's us. We're like, dude, dad, you're missing out on the potential of this phone. Like, dude, if you only knew, dad, how much this can do for you, right? So, I, you know, sometimes I wonder, like, not that God is judging you and I, but, man, if you only knew how much God invested in you. If you only knew, like, all the downloads that God's trying to, like, renew in your life. <laughs> If you only knew, man, like the worth that God can maximize out of your life. And that's what Paul is reminding the church. This is who you are in Christ Jesus. This is who you are. Like don't sleep, church. Don't fall into like just the routine of doing church. Don't just sing songs because that's the song I like. Or don't sing them because Enoch's not singing the song I like. But that we sing the songs knowing that they're true. Singing that God is who he says he is. And he's invested in you what he says he has invested in you. Someone's like, no, 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 I don't need that. <laughs> I just, and God's like, dude, that there's, there's so much more I want you to understand. says, man, that, that we are sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit who is uh, the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of His glory. Man, that's God's down payment. Like, dude, I'm coming back. But meanwhile, let me just put a down payment. So that you know your mind. Let me put a down payment so you know I'm coming back. Let me put a down payment so you know I've invested in you. 
Let me put a down payment because I still got work to do. It may not be finished yet. I may not come back. I mean, not come back today or tomorrow, but I am coming back. But let me put a down payment so you don't forget. You don't forget. In a day and an age where we're busy, we're busy being fathers and mothers. We're busy being husbands and wives. We're busy being employees and building our lives. We're busy, man, trying to, you know, the best way we can raise our children. We're busy. We're busy, man. Like, God, like, I'm just try- I'm trying to figure this out. And somewhere along the way, we're so busy trying to add to our lives that we lose sight who we are in Christ Jesus. For this reason, verse 15, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. Dude, this is, this is good. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints. Because we could be good Christians. We could be good busy bodies. We could be good, man, coming to church early, doing, 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 and really losing sight of why we do what we do, of really losing sight. I don't, he says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of Him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which He has called you. Man, that you may have wisdom, revelation of His knowledge, that the eyes of your hearts are enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which He has called you. This should be our prayer. God, awaken me. That I don't sleep on the call of my life. That I don't sleep on the hope that we have. That I don't sleep along the journey forgetting what this is about. But that I'm constantly growing in the grace and the knowledge of your son Jesus Christ. Let my mind understand, let my eyes see, let my ears hear, and let my heart receive what you have for me. For what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his great might? That he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. Above every name that is named. Not only in this age, but all that is to come. And he put all things under his feet. He gave him a head over all things. And to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. God, he is rich. Last week I said, man, like if you have been coming to Jesus Christ and haven't found peace, it's because you still haven't discovered what you have in him. If we've been coming to Jesus Christ and you still haven't found satisfaction for your soul, then you have truly, have yet, you have truly yet to encounter who Jesus Christ is. That's why Paul was reminding the church in in this first chapter, man, this is the adoption, the acceptance, the redemption, the forgiveness, the wisdom, the inheritance, and the seal of the Holy Spirit. He gives life. He gives grace. He gives citizenship in heaven. He pretty much in Jesus Christ has given us all access to heaven reminding us who we are in Christ as we go through the book of Ephesians feel free to read ahead you get the spoiler alerts but as you read through the book of Ephesians 
We're going to journey. We're going to talk about, man, what it is to be in Christ. We're going to talk about who we were before Christ, who we are in Christ, who, how we ought to live because of Christ. We're going to talk about how we ought to be as children, as sons and daughters. We're going to go through how we, it should be the, you know, as a man, as husbands, as wives. We're going to talk about marriage. We're going to address some of these issues because it is important that who we are in Christ first has to influence every aspect of our lives. Enoch, if you could come up. You and I, like those in Ephesians, are a group of believers who are rich beyond measure in Jesus Christ. I challenge us, church, that we can take inventory. Not in such a manner where you beat yourself up. But that we take inventory of God's faithfulness and how God has been faithful throughout our journey. That, that we don't get lost and lose perspective in our current season. But that we can approach God and say, God, remind me again. Remind me again who I am in you. Remind me again why I'm here. Remind me. Help me rediscover. Restore the joy of salvation. Make me more aware of your presence. Let me not just be a Christian that is busy doing and not really being. All of us, even in our relationships, you could be a student going to school and you're like, man, sometimes when, when, when school's getting heavy and the units are a lot and you got to sometimes remind yourself, okay, why am I going to school again? What brought me to this point? What passions do I have? Why do I want to do what I'm, what, what, I'm, what I'm stepping into? Some of us, even in our marriages, man, we, you know, we like look back and not that you look at your spouse, right, and be like, man, well, I don't know why I married this chick. But, hey, but sometimes as, as, as couples, man, like you just get busy doing life. You become strangers in your own home and, you have to like step back and be reminded, man, like, I remember. Girl, you still look good to me. You know what I mean? My man, you could be like, man, my man still looks fine to me. And sometimes, you know, I, I, you, I, I, I especially Facebook helps you, right? Because you see like these pictures from like memories from like, you know, seven years ago. You see pictures that you posted and you see your kids and you're like, oh, that's when they're cute. And then you remember, I do love them. <laughs> this is why I haven't been sleeping. <laughs> or I see pictures of Jackie of our honeymoon and you're like, oh man, I didn't have bags under my eyes. And I'm reminded like, man, this, this I do, I, this is, this is the part that makes you know, be married to Jackie special. This is the part that being married to my spouse is special. And, and you remind, you're reminded of those things. And I know it's just like as we read through, through Ephesians and 
more than anything, it's just being reminded who we are in Christ. You have a seal. He has sealed you. There's no need to doubt. I don't know if I'm saved today. I had a bad thought. <laughs> I don't know if God still loves me today. You know what I mean? I Just be able to say, man, God, here I am. Ah, this is who I am in you. I was a knucklehead. Now I'm redeemed. Man, like some of us in here can testify if it wasn't for God. Good Lord, man, where would we be? Where would our marriages be? For some of us, because maybe of a mishaps or maybe because of a divorce or a breakup, God, if it wasn't for you, Lord, God knows I would have fell off to the deep end. Through the hardship in life, if it wasn't for you, God, where else would I be? And Paul's bringing them back and just saying, hey, church, give them praise for who you are in him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your inheritance. Thank you that through your Holy Spirit I'm adopted. Thank you that when I was yet still a sinner, you died on the cross for me. Thank you, Lord, because I'm free. Thank you, Lord, because I'm redeemed. Thank you, Lord, because I don't have to be that old man anymore. Thank you, Lord, because I can walk in freedom. Thank you, Lord, because the kingdom of heaven is not food or drink, but joy and the Holy Ghost. God, let me walk in joy. Take me back to my first love, God. When my worship was about you. Take me back to my first love, God. When I read your word to know more about you. Take me back to my first love, God. That when I prayed, it was to seek your face. Take me back to my first love, God. Take me back. And remind me once again, Lord, of the inheritance I have in you. Church, you can stand. Just keep your heads bowed and just keep thanking God right now. All that we can say up to this point, God has been with you. Up to this point, God has been faithful. I haven't been, I maybe I've along the way I've been wayward, I've gone my own way, but you've been my anchor. You've been the beacon of light, God, that brought me back. And as the worship song, as the worship team gets into this last song, I just want to encourage you, church, if there's anyone here. That you forgot, man, who you are in Christ along the way. And in, instead of being a recipient of His grace and mercy, you've been kind of just beating yourself up or feeling less than. I invite you as they finish this last song, I invite you to walk forward and we'll just pray with you together.